What's going on here after family? I go by here after ooze before we take off. Off man, bring it back. Hit that like, comment, subscribe, comment the video down below, turn on your bell notifications. Let me know what videos you want me to watch and I'll react to it. This channel is not only to increase your iman slash dean, but also to increase my iman slash dean. Without further ado, let's go. The jinns used to from a very old time and they were here when the jinns were residing on the earth and there was no humans on the earth. They are, they are a nation or they are a group of beings Allah has created. They have everything similar to us. They, they eat, they sleep, they have homes, they have religions. They were on this earth and they were causing a lot of mischief on the earth and when a messenger would come they would kill that messenger. And that is when Iblis, at that time, he was a jinn, he was part of their world. And he, you know, ascended uh, high enough that he became part of the world of, of angels because of his good nature. He was a good being. And he started to worship Allah and worship Allah until he got through to the ranks of the angels, some of the highest angels. In fact, there are certain weak hadiths to say that he even worshipped Allah in every single sky, every single heaven he worshipped Allah. And he got to so close that he then asked Allah to send with him a group of angels to go back to the earth and to banish the jinn to try and curb the violence on the on the earth. So Allah allowed that and he came, he did that and you know the jinns were now only a few in scarce places of the world. And that's when, when he came back up, Allah knew his intentions because Iblis was looking for his own little um, high rank and he wanted to become you know Mr. Chief. And Allah knew his intention, so he wanted to show this. And he created Adam alayhi salam, and then he told him to bow. And then here, Iblis refused because he knew the significance of this bowing. That bowing wasn't because of worship. That bowing was to accept the authority of Adam alayhi salam over the jinns and over even the angels. So Iblis saw this and he didn't bow. And therefore, you know, we know the clash that happened. You know, uh, he asked for extra time and he got that. He said, I'm going to... I'm not going to let this human being and all his progeny off. I'm going to take as many of them as I can to help out with me. Mm. And he said, I'm going to come in front of them. I'm going to come behind them. I'm going to come from the right side. I'm going to come from the left side. You know, Allah, you will not find most of them to be thankful to you. Iblis said, except for those of your servants that are going to be righteous. If you go to any village, if you go to any city, if you go to any nation, you will find that usually a part of their belief, a part of uh, their myths and their fairy tales, the jinn are mentioned. So whether it be ghosts or spirits or the dead returning in spirit form, these are all what we find in the tradition of the people, usually they're referring to the jinn. So this unseen world, the unseen what they call spirits. Concerning their origin and their creation, we know that the jinn are created from a smokeless flame of fire. It means the very edge or the tip of the flame, the purest and hottest part of the flame. This is what the jinn are created from. This doesn't mean that they are now fiery. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was in his masjid in Medina. And whilst he was praying, he reached out and he like grabbed something. Later on, Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw that a shaitan, a devil, a jinn was walking towards him and was going to try and attack the messenger alayhi salatu salam. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was able to grab hold of this jinn, throw him to the ground. And the messenger alayhi salam had held him and the words of the messenger were until I felt the coolness of his tongue on my hand. And then the Prophet ﷺ continued and he said, Were it not for the prayer of my brother Sulaiman, I would have tied up this devil in the morning so that each of the people could see him. Because Sulaiman ﷺ said, Oh Allah, don't give anybody a kingdom like mine 
after me. We know that from the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam was that Allah had given him the ability to do what? To have control of the jinn. Normally, we cannot see the jinn unless they take the form of animals or they take the form of humans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, referring to shaitan, verily, he and his his followers or his tribe, they see you from where you cannot see them. The Messenger alayhi salam, he told us that there are three types of jinn. One type flies through the air. And these are the types of jinn which can cover vast distances in a very short space of time. They can go huge distances that would take us hours or days to travel. The jinn of this type which flies, they can cover these distances in the blink of an eye. Another type comes in the form of snakes and dogs. And a third type is based in one place, but it travels about. Ya Ikhwan, it's important to note that they have their own religions. Sometimes when we think of jinn, we think that they're all disbelievers. We think that they are all evil. But this isn't the case. So you will find jinns who are Hindu, Sikh, uh, Muslim, Atheist, those who worship the devil, they have their own religion. Is every jinn a shaitan? And is every shaitan a jinn? The answer is no. You get shayateen from amongst mankind and you get shayateen from amongst the jinn. But not all jinn are devils. We've already established that there are those who are Muslims. What do they look like? What's the appearance of these shayateen now? So when I say shayateen, I'm referring to the evil, rebellious, disbelieving ones from amongst the jinn. Whenever we think about jinn, we always have a very ugly picture in our heads. In our minds, we always have a scary, uh, frightening image. And indeed, this is what the shayateen, they look like. We know that the shaytan, he has two horns. It's a hadith which is recorded by Imam Muslim on the authority of Ibn Umar radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, do not pray when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting because it rises between the two horns of the shaytan. Some of the commentators of this hadith, what they have said is that this is the time when those people who worship the sun, they are worshipping. So when the sun rises and the sun sets, this is when those people who worship the sun, they are doing their worship at this time. So whilst they are worshipping, the shaitan, he comes and stands in front of them. And as the sun rises or sets, it rises through his horns. This is what some of the people have mentioned. We know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was sent as a messenger for all of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the beginning of uh, Surah Al-Jinn, say, it has been revealed to me that a group from amongst the jinn, they have listened and they have said, indeed we have heard an amazing Qur'an. We also know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was in Medina and he disappeared. And the companions were terrified. Somebody has taken the Messenger of Allah. In the morning, the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he came back and they were amazed. Where have you been, O Messenger of Allah? We've spent the whole night looking for you. He said, I went with the jinn. He told them that he had been giving da'wah to the jinn. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam took some of his companions and showed them where he had been giving da'wah to the jinn. And the companions narrated that we could see the remains of the fires that they had lit. We know, ya ikhwan, the jinn, their world is for them and our world, it is for us. They have their own rules, they have their own scholars like we've mentioned, like the ones who listened to the Messenger alayhi salam, went back and started giving da'wah to the people. They have their own laws, they have their own civilization. It's not for us to meddle or get involved in their world. And it's not for them, it's not permissible for them to meddle or get involved with our world. We mentioned that in general, we cannot see the jinn. Some of the animals, they can see the jinn. The Prophet ﷺ told us in a hadith which is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, if you hear the crowing of a rooster, then ask Allah for his bounty because this rooster has seen an angel. And if you hear the braying of a donkey, 
then seek refuge in Allah for it has seen a devil. Also the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, if you hear the barking of a dog, then seek refuge in Allah because they see what you do not see. What do the jinn eat and what do the jinn drink? Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, he narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he relieved himself and then he ordered Abu Hurairah radiallahu an to bring him some stones. And the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, Do not bring me bones, nor bring me dung. He said, They are the food of the jinn. So when we are eating our chicken and our lamb and whatever it might be, and we have the bones and we get rid of the bones, if the jinn come across this, and these are the good believing jinn, then this will be food for them by the permission of Allah. The eating habits of the shayateen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as is recorded by Imam Muslim, when any one of you eats, let him eat with his right hand, and when he drinks, let him drink with his right hand. For the shaitan eats with his left hand, and he drinks with his left hand. The jinn, they marry and they multiply. The jinn, they can and they do fall in love with human beings. This is one of the reasons why jinn possess a human being, is due to love. Some of the abilities of the jinn. In the times before the Prophet ﷺ came, the jinns, they would ascend to very high places in the sky. And then they would try and eavesdrop to try and listen to what was going on in Jannah. What was the decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then those jinn, they would bring it back and they would whisper it into the ear of the fortune teller. But when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala caused the skies to be guarded by stars and shooting stars. And then they weren't able to listen anymore. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, referring to what the jinn said, and we sought, we tried to reach the heavens, but we have found it filled with powerful gods and burning flames and we used to try and listen but whoever tries to listen now he will find a burning flame lying in wait for him after he came the heavens were guarded and they are still guarded by these uh, by these stars and by these flames so when you see the shooting star then you know that it is a shaitan being pursued Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu an, he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When the night falls or when evening comes, bring your children, keep your children inside. For the devils they spread out at that time. Then when one hour of the night has passed, let them out again. And lock the doors and mention the name of Allah. For the shaitan cannot open a locked door over which the name of Allah has been mentioned. One of the abilities that the, the jinn have is to possess human beings. Many people, they, they completely reject this. Indeed, the shaitan flows through the veins of the son of Adam like his blood. Indeed, the plot of shaitan is weak. And sufficient is Allah as a disposer of affairs. Lost for words, here after family, what do you guys think about this video? You got me really thinking, man. We can't take our dean for granted. Man, I, I didn't want to jump straight into real videos like this, but it's important, guys. You see that the gin can flow through the human's body. It can easily flow through the human's bloodstream. So guys, make sure you pray on every door you close in your house. And also, also, make sure you're keeping up with your salat. And make sure you're making dua. Because this is a serious matter. There's jinn everywhere. I did not know all these details. I did not know there's societies of jinn. I, did, I thought all jinn were bad. But apparently there's bad jinn and there's good jinn. I'm just dissecting this knowledge for you because you gotta, you gotta open your mind. Like, there is much more to this life, to this universe, than this small world. 
as you can see, there's a whole nother world of jinn that we're not. There's a whole nother society of jinn, and we're not supposed to try to infiltrate their society. This is a real serious matter, guys. Make sure you clean your home. Make sure you're making your survive, and make sure you're living in the right path. Here after family, I don't want to keep this video rolling too long. I love you guys. Stay tuned. More videos on the way. Be blessed. May Allah help all you guys. May He guide all you guys. May God put you on the right path. May He keep all jinn away from you. May He keep all evil temptations of shaitan away from you. I'm out. Here at the family, I love you guys. Peace. Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise Him all day for what is and what was. Take hold of your iman.